sorry, with the hand there. This is a uh, going to be a three-tone sunburst on a quilted top. See, back is like that. It has a little veneer on there, and it's going to be a three-tone. So, pretty sure. People are going to complain about this, but this is the order. Anyway, this guitar has already been undercoated and grain filled, and then undercoated again. I don't need to put color there. And so, all that has been sanded smooth and now given to me. First, I'll put on yellow. I'm sure some of you like it just like that, and that could be done, but on this one, it's not how it's going to be. So, I will put lacquer now. It's thin lacquer. I like to put it just to give myself a nice, smooth, uniform surface to do my burst. But first, I will start with the sides. Okay. I will do a more narrow burst on this than normal. Because you want to preserve the quilted wood. You don't want to hide it with these colors. Like Dark Salem was the only color that's actually uh, opaque. So, that's why I'm going to make a narrow burst. The yellow and the red are transparent. You'll be able to see the grain. Just applying a little bit of material each pass, not very much. It's easy to make a run. And uh, trying to avoid that by just lightly applying a few coats on there. This is all nitrocellulose lacquer. That's what this paint is. The yellow was, the undercoat was, this dark Salem is, the red I'm going to put is. I believe the top coat that is going to come tomorrow, this will dry for a day. It's, it'll get top coated tomorrow with more lacquer. Okay. Make sure I get in the horns good. Okay, I'll spin it around to this side. Should be good. I'm going to do the bottom. Always being conscious of where your gun is aiming as far as the overspray goes. It's easy to lose sight of that. You know what I mean? Okay. Now, I can't have a wide burst on the back and not on the front. The bursts have to be the same, the same size. So I'm just going to make the tiniest burst I can right now. You see, it already went over there when I was doing the sides so narrow there. So I can't, kind of got to match that a little bit.
see that's not even one finger that's more narrow than one finger this side keeping it tiny just focusing on the very crest there get started with the burst see how I made it a little bit wide there that came from when I was doing the sides bit wider here than it is there even though we want to keep it as narrow as we can it does have to be even let's we'll make it a smidge wider right here to kind of even that up there we go now <coughs> use my tack rag here Looks like it's about time for a new one, but I think I can use this one more time. Just clean this off. Any dust or overspray that might be on there, mainly overspray from just doing the sides and the burst. Just wipe it lightly with this tack cloth here. side a lot of times you don't notice a difference when you do this depending on how much overspray there is but if there is overspray it's not always easy to see but then once you clear it like if this thing is going to get top coated and there is overspray sitting on there well all of a sudden all that overspray is a lot more visible so you just want to eliminate that problem Okay, I'll put some lacquer on here to kind of see where we're at. Let's start on the back. There we go. If I put the red even more narrow than I normally would, that'll help to just keep the whole thing looking tiny. Spray it right on that wettish lacquer. Kind of helps it meld all together. Do this side. I'm kind of shooting right onto the actual dark part, letting the uh, the overspray do the, make the red, rather than putting the red on there specifically. I'm just letting the overspray do it as I aim onto the dark. Does that make sense? There we go. We don't put it here. I know a lot of people ask that question. That's going to be covered by a pick card. And 
That's just the way Fender does it. That's the way they want it. Not my choice. Anyway, there you go. Look at that. Looks nice, right?